and the Medicine Research, Research Group, Department of Pharmaceutical and Pharmaceutical Microbiology, Faculty of uh, Pharmaceutical Sciences, University of Nigeria in Suka. And the talk is tailor made nanolipid gel encapsulated myconazole nitrate loaded nanoparticles improve its antimycotic activity. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, to, uh, this time around, we are going to look at uh, some formulations of um, meconazole, which I termed, um, or we termed, telomate nanolipid gel encapsulating uh, meconazole. <coughs> First, I want to thank uh, Clinam and the organization entirely for the opportunity to be here to speak to us about this, uh, our developed uh, formulations. I will take us through these few aspects of the work, introduction, uh, work, the results, conclusion, and then acknowledgement. Oropharyngeal candidiasis, as we know, is becoming increasingly a public health problem because of uh, what we experience, especially with the uh, immune suppressed uh, patients, compromised patients, with infections like HIV and then AIDS human immunodeficiency virus, and then acquired immunodeficiency disease, especially in Africa, where thousands, tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands of people have suffered from this disease. So the image there could tell us how or could show how this disease affects the oral uh, cavity. <laughs> so current medicines for treatment of the disease have some problems, and that's why I want to try to use this nanolipid gel approach to know if we can con help control the infections. And we should note that uh, this, the HIV is tackled with the uh, antiviral drugs, and antiviral drugs are not effective against antiviral, anti antifungal uh, drugs. So as you are treating the virus, the fungus, or the fungal infection will uh, keep uh, increasing. So it has some problems. Low oral bioavailability as a result of extensive sparse effects and then short resistance time at the site of action, requirement for multiple daily doses, and then local irritation, and then drug resistance following the emergence of a candida albicans from deeper layers of the tissue. And that is why it is becoming an issue now with what is called azo-resistant candida albicans. So what can nanoparticles do in this regard? You see from the figure, the image there, that the nanoparticles can quickly can enter deeper than ordinary topical formulations without a, a specific engineering. You see that these particles can quickly go through this mucous layer and enter the cells and then even deeper the tissue where it, the candida albicans reside and keep re-emerging and infections will keep uh, coming, on, coming up and coming up. So now what did we do to address this problem? We first formulated the solid lipid nanoparticles which we tagged with phospholipids, and then we say phospholipid modified solid lipid nanoparticles, and then encapsulated this meconazole nitrates, which is very active against the candida albicans. And then we developed and characterized oromucosal nanogel, lipid gels of that. That is, after formulating in solid lipid nanoparticles, we now formulated these lipid nanoparticles as nanogels, and then we tested and characterized these nanogels especially using simulated salivary fluids at pH 6.8. After that, we evaluated the activity of these nano gels against clinical isolates of uh, this candida albicans. Clinical isolates isolated from uh, real HIV patients having this uh, disease. What did we get at the end? The nanoparticles which we formulated, we could see the the desired distribution of the selected soft design based nanoparticles with Z average of 139 to 393 nanometers. And then PDI, well, 0 0.3 to about 0 0.53, and zeta potential 30 to 39, showing high stability. Then the encapsulation efficiency of 55 to 67 patients, telling us, patient, telling us that uh, we actually encapsulated big quantity of uh, the meconazole in the solid lipid uh, nitro nanoparticles. Thereafter, we looked at uh, the dissolution profiles 
in simulated uh, salivary fluid, and we arrived at the showing that uh, the showing that our nanoparticles formulated as gels performed better in terms of prolongation of release compared with the, the oral uh, gel or called dactarin on the pharmaceutical market currently. If you look at the results again, the gel formulations performed better in terms of the inhibition zone diameter compared with the dactarin oral gel on the market. Then the, if you look at the bioadhesive uh, for, uh, uh, testing, that is tested the bioadhesive mucoadhesive property to something that will help it get prolonged when in contact with the, the mucus, it still performs highly because you see that uh, they have high strengths. And with this, we find out that uh, the formulations can adhere and release the nanoparticles inside them, encapsulated there in the gel form, and then keep releasing and then prolonging the action because that is what will uh, give us this kind of uh, release. Look at the dactarin, which is what you have in the market, and then look at how it's just within 300 minutes, everything has uh, released the content, but the formulations we developed, the three lead formulations we developed, were able to retain and then continue to release the encapsulated meconazole nitrate up to about 700 minutes and then going further. So I think with this, we'll be able to confidently say that uh, we can further develop this uh, nano mucoadhesive nanolipid gels containing uh, meconazole, meconazole nitrate for use in treatment of uh, oropharyngeal candidiasis in, um, nano, in um, HIV AIDS patients. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> yes. Actually, this work was um, a work study by um, my PhD student, Dr. Franklin Kinechiku. I would have been here with him, but um, it was not possible. He was not able to get his visa. If you go outside there, you see his poster at poster number 20. He would have come to present another aspect of this his PhD work, but it was not possible. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. We finished ahead of time, and we have uh, time for a couple of questions. Uh, are those uh, nanoparticles uh, attacked in any way by digestive enzymes in the mouth? Would that play a role? Digestive processes in the oral cavity? Yes. Yes, it, the, like the, the enzymes in the oral cavity can play a role, but you know that in biodiversity systems, there are other aspects which, you notice the PhD work, I just presented a little aspect of the work. There are other tests which have been done and which are still uh, ongoing in this regard, because we know that biohacking systems, you can incorporate enzyme inhibitors. There are certain degrees of enzyme inhibitors that you can incorporate and then suppress this enzyme, myelin enzyme that you have in the, stomach, in the, in the, in the buccal cavity that will prevent uh, degradation of uh, either the components of the gels or even on the particles themselves. And that will still continue to uh, lead to increase in the prolongation of the action of the drug in the buccal cavity. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, the next speaker is um, um, Sarah Min.